Hello everyone, I'm Ms. Vibeshna Sharma, associated with Himali Boarding School. I hope you all have been following my videos on the chapter Animal Tissues. We've already discussed about epithelial tissue and, and the muscular tissue. Today we'll be discussing about nervous tissue and the connective tissue. So first we start off with the nervous tissue. Now the nervous tissue helps in coordinating our body. It also, uh, so how does it coordinate our body? It carries messages which are known as impulse from the various organs to the brain and impulse from the brain back to the various organs. Okay. Now the nervous tissue is composed of special type of cells known as neurons. So the special type of cells that form the nervous tissue are called neurons. Now what does a neuron look like? So a neuron looks something like this. It consists of a cell body known as the perikaryon. So the cell body is known as the perikaryon. It consists of a centrally located nucleus which is surrounded by cytoplasm. Now you will find various small thread-like structures arising from the perikaryon. These thread-like structures are known as dendrons. Okay, so thread-like structures arise from the perikaryon and they are called dendron. The dendron further branch into dendrites. So there's a perikaryon, we have a nucleus in the middle and then there is, it is surrounded by cytoplasm. Then fine thread-like structures arise known as dendron and these dendrons branch into dendrites. One of the thread-like projection is very long and it is known as axon. And these dendrites, dendron, axons are all protoplasmic projections. They are all protoplasmic projections. So one of the projections is very long and it is called axon. Now, the axon is covered by a sheath. If you see, it is not completely covered. There are some gaps in the middle. The sheath is known as the myelin sheath. And the gaps in between is known as the nodes of Ranvier. Okay, and the axon it ends in bulb-like structures known as axon endings. These axon endings are filled by chemicals. And these chemicals are known as neurotransmitter. These neurotransmitter helps in transporting impulse or messages from one neuron to another. So there's a cell body or perikaryon. From there there are thread like protoplasmic projections called dendrons. Dendrons branch into dendrites. One of the protoplasmic projections is very long, it is called axon, and then it is partially covered by a sheet known as myelin sheet. The gaps are known as nodes of Ranvier, and the axon ends in bulk like structures known as axon endings, which are filled by neurotransmitter. Now, I think all of you have seen an electric cable. There's a plastic coating outside and inside if you cut it and see, see many copper wires. So 
these neurons also, you find that there are many neurons and then they are covered by an insulated sheath. So, a bundle of neurons is called a nerve. A bundle of neurons is called a nerve. So, there's an insulated sheath and then you find number of neurons inside it. And that bundle is known as nerve. So, the function of the nervous tissue is to conduct impulse to and from the brain and the spinal cord. Now, the next tissue, that is the connective tissue. Now, connective tissue is again further divided into three types. You have the connective tissue proper, the skeletal tissue, and the fluid connective tissue. proper is found mostly everywhere in the body. It is the most widely spread connective tissue. This is further divided into four types. You have the areolar tissue, the ligaments, or we can call the yellow fibrous tissue. fibrous tissue, the white fibrous tissue and the last one that is the adipose tissue. So the connective tissue proper is divided into four types, areolar tissue, yellow fibrous tissue, white fibrous tissue and the adipose tissue. Now this area of tissue you find it just below your skin. It helps in making the skin elastic. Just pull your skin, see? It helps in making our skin elastic. It also binds the different organs in our body to the skin. So area of tissue found just below the skin. It makes our skin elastic and it helps in binding the various organs to the skin. Yellow fibrous tissue is found in the ligaments. Now what are ligaments? Ligaments are those tissue which connects one bone to another. You can't separate your bones, isn't it? So it acts like a gum or a glue. So the ligaments help in binding or connecting one bone to another. And this is made up of yellow fibrous tissue. Now, the yellow fibrous tissue, they are very strong. That means they have excessive strength, but they are not flexible. Okay? So, yellow fibrous tissue found in ligaments. Ligaments help in connecting bones to bones. They have huge strength, but they are not flexible. White fibrous tissue is found in the tendons. Now, the tendons connect muscles to bones. Last time we did not the voluntary muscles. It is found in the skeletal system of our body. So, the entire bones are connected to the muscles. So, this is a, so the tendons help in binding. So, this is another type of glue. So, it helps in binding the bones and the muscles. And they are formed of white fibrous tissue. This one has maximum strength and they are also flexible. So here, ligaments join bones to bones, tendons join bones to muscles. They have huge strength, they also have huge strength. They are not flexible, they are flexible. The last one, adipose tissue. And this is also found below your skin. Now, if you all are if you all are non-vegetarian, when you eat meat, you see that white portion no? under the skin, or when you are eating meat, you see that white portion. That is the adipose tissue. The adipose tissue stores energy in the form of fats. 
first one. The next one, it keeps our body warm. It maintains our body temperature. Okay? Then we come to the skeletal tissue. It is of two types. Cartilage and bone. All of you know what is a bone. Now just touch the tip of your nose, your ears. These are all made up of cartilage. They are softer than bones and they are elastic also. So cartilage, soft, bones are hard, they are elastic, they are non-elastic. Actually cartilage, they help in uh, protecting the bones from shocks, from mechanical shocks and injuries. So cartilage protects the bones from mechanical shocks and injuries. And we know that the bone, it gives support to our body. Fluid connective tissue consists of the erythrocytes, the leukocytes, and the thrombocytes, along with the blood platelets. So, if you remember, last time we had done it in class 6 blood, the fluid connective tissue. Red blood cells, white blood cells, sorry, this will be the plasma of the platelets, the platelets, so this is the cellular part of blood and this is the fluid part of blood. So, I hope you all understood what we did today. We did the nervous tissue and the connective tissue. Connective tissue divided into four types. Connective tissue proper, sorry, three types, skeletal tissue and the fluid connective tissue. The connective tissue proper is further divided into four types, areola tissue, the yellow fibrous tissue, the white fibrous tissue and the adipose tissue. Skeletal tissue is divided into cartilage and bone. Con the fluid connective tissue is the blood. It consists of the cellular parts, erythrocytes, leukocytes, thrombocytes and the liquid part that is plasma. So keep watching my videos. Please do like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you everyone.